it's actually kind of funny how sometimes chapters where nothing really happens are some of the most hype. I mean, this was a very fast read chapter, if not one of the fastest Black Clover like chapters that I've at least read through in a while. And I think at the same time, it was not just from the fact that we had some really nice spread pages, but there wasn't a lot of dialogue, and it was mostly just set up. But it was set up all in like a really, like very fluid, like hype way. It's like in every aspect that it showed. The only way that I think it could have gotten like uh, it could have really just been better. Like just in the idea of like the, like if you were gonna hype up this chapter more was if we saw stuff going on with either Morris or, uh, you know, Nama and Lilith. Because those are, those are the three hot spots right now. And obviously Tabata is saving those for, like, the big meet coming up whenever we're, you know, we're going to actually see the fights against the 100% Dark Triad and the, uh, you know, the, the first two high-class devils that have shown up. Because we haven't really, like peered towards any of that seriously like the most we saw of the 100 percent was the chapter where they first got it and you only saw them you know busting up uh their opponents that they're up against and then we had like small dialogues with yuno and xenon but xenon doesn't look like he's doing anything crazy he's mostly just got those bone tendrils on his back just whipping around now nothing too much to you know to show is just like a general massive increase of where he's at we just know that they're more powerful we don't know the extent yet but Nama and Lilith, there's this, again, very, like, big question mark for me. Because they don't have their, they don't have grimoires. But they don't, I don't think they need it because the gate's open. So they should just be at normal power. I'm wondering, though, exactly what the extent of, uh, what the extent of these first ones are going to be. Because I, I still personally, this is just me personally, I don't think they're as powerful as Zygrid. Because though they are highest order of the first floor that's highest order of the first floor like really when you when you say it out loud it you really have to take into perspective the fact that there's obviously much more to come and zagrid is high class we don't know what floor zagrid could have been we don't know if he was also from the first floor he could have been a high class from the second third fourth we don't really know i personally think just like the level of threat that he had in terms of like his intelligence um the level of his uh just powerful magic obviously word soul magic very strong and the fact that even though it was a not at max licked in lumiere he was still you know doing well against them and you know dark uh dark light patri as well as uh you know like yami elf shard like he still really powerful it, it's hard to gauge him compared to other devils it's not like we have like five or six devils uh having fought so we can kind of rank them and i think that's going to be one of the more important things to go on in the next couple chapters and what i'm more interested in when it comes to nama and lilith as well as any of the more powerful devils that could show up like it doesn't they don't all have to be a, a like you know highest rank like maybe we get a, a a devil who is like low ranking but out of like the better class pop up and it's like oh somehow this guy slipped through it maybe it'll like there'll be explanation of maybe the more complicated the the devil magics are the less raw powerful they are but the more like general tricky and then like maybe that'll be like nama and lilith things like maybe their magic them itself is it absurd to deal with it's probably got to you know they they have to have their own special trait to their abilities like maybe again maybe it's just like sheer temperature gap like the one that's using ice it's like oh super uh absurd cold where if you just like touch it'll freeze your body and then maybe like the fire one is just raw heat where it's like anything like it just runs in the wall there's not explosion it just melts the spot or something they could have something like that where it's just like their magic isn't as crazy as word soul magic but it's like their their level of just raw power is is really crazy because when you look at like lucifero he's the top he's the strongest out of them and he's got gravity magic gravity obviously is a very good power it's always going to be like it's just useful in like a general sense but the the extent that it really can kind of go at versus like word soul magic when you really think about it is word soul magic is probably the most flexible magic in the series because like, it's one of those super all-purpose magic, kind of like uh, Rill's painting magic and Dorothy's dream magic. They're they're up there where there seems like the, the limitations seem to just be on, like, the general 
imagination and um an experience quick wit that the user is having versus like I imagine with uh you know with with Lucifaro he's going to obviously have all the stuff that that Dante had with his gravity and then have stuff kind of like how Dante was able to warp space by using like a way that gravity can affect space in order to do that like he's essentially using his magic obviously to do something that is like a, a like a step outside of, of like the norm for it but is still within the realm of possibilities if you're strong enough but word soul magic just like i said it's it's similar to that of painting magic dream magic it just it, it really just comes down to the user how fast is the user how smart are they how quick-witted are they how uh, good are they at problem solving i'm very interested in the next couple chapters about just seeing the gap between some of these devils because like, we know the lower ones i mean the lower ones are fodder compared to them we, we didn't really need to have that explored much like we can just see it as well as just like the general logic like this chapter for the most part like asta pops out of his union form shortly before like with less time that he thought it was like he said five minutes it looks like it's a little bit um less as he said he even says like you know he, he overestimated pretty much the, the the amount of time and then when he's falling a portal opens and then you see a bunch of uh you know a bunch of feet of characters that he's talking to and the portal one's got to be like the easiest one it's funeral and you see a bunch of feet of like different characters that he's happy to see it's gonna be the black bulls my guess and i think a lot of people like uh you know have had the same uh belief is that Tabata isn't showing them because there's probably, like, at least, doesn't have to be both, but at least Magna or Zora, maybe Gordon, who knows. One of the members that hasn't been around since the time skip yet, and we're going to see what their post-time skip design is. Could be more than just one, but I think there has to be at least one if Tabata's not going to show them, because otherwise, what's the point? Otherwise, what's the point of, of, of just hiding them? I feel like there has to be at least one of those members that has been teased, and... Though, I think Zora has a general higher level of of ceiling of just, like, how powerful he can get because his magic is actually really broken. If he can get, like, the, the fact that he can, could, he was able to make reflection spells, like, with his uh, runes and traps and everything, that it was able to bounce, like, it was able to, to, to bounce back four times the strength of those five conjoined, uh, you know, elf attacks, and one of them obviously being Raya and four times their totality maybe not 100 percent of their totality but a combined attack shows that it, it seems that like his we don't know the extent that his traps can go up to like i'm wondering if it is just like if he can get them off in time they'll work or if there's just generally like an idea of like how high it can get up to before it uh it just you know shatters but very very high level of potential just because his is based off of you know a very strong unfair ability and his intelligence and strategic ideas magna though i i really am hoping magna shows up and just does some cool shit like i don't expect him to like you know like show up and like beat a devil or be like a clutch thing and, and one of the bigger devils but if there was like a mid-range devil or like maybe like an upper dark disciple that's actually like relevant and memorable or like one of the shining generals something like that where he's like becomes a key player in that fight i like it, it's really hard to tell because it's very clear that tabata has plans for magna but we know that magna his mana isn't very like he has a very low amount of mana as a commoner he doesn't he like he wasn't able to use runes we don't really know what his power up is gonna be a lot of people assume ultimate magic i think he's gonna have a bunch of magic weapons and he's going to essentially be like just like this badass um, you know, master of, of magic tools. Because we don't have any character like that in the series. And it would make sense of why he would, you know, get a lot of um, a lot of different weapons that he can utilize his abilities through in different ways. Because Magna, for the most part, what we've seen, he's actually very competent. Like, he's actually very competent in battle. It's just that he doesn't have a lot of, uh, of magic. It's, it's kind of like not the same character, but like when you look at Shikamaru... Like, he, like, I, I can't remember the chapter, but it's, like, it, it's noted that he doesn't have a ton of chakra. But, like, his whole thing is just being very smart and strategic and how he can set up things and use his, uh, you know, his different jutsus to his advantage to, you know, ch pretty much checkmate his opponents. Magna is obviously not as smart as Shikamaru, but the way that he fights is in a, again, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like you're... You're like a, a really reserving way, like he, he's getting the most of his, uh, his his attacks every time, and the way that his fireballs all do different things, like in in like small versions, like basic fireballs, throw them, hit something, explodes. 
ones that can disappear, ones that are remote timed. He, he's got like this this level of just mixing them all up that really throws his opponents off, as we saw in the uh, the fight with Lufalu, you know, the elf that took over Luck's body. He's actually very incompetent in setting them up. And the fact that like even even though it was base Asta in like the in the Royal Magic Knights tournament, that's still very very uh, impressive that he was able to you know push Asta for a little bit. And Magna again has a level of uh, of just general potential. I think of being a threat if he can like get just get more of these on like all these different fireballs that are pretty much the same attack but tweaked in one different way. And then he's able just to figure out how can I use this very simple attack to the best of his advantage. Like imagine if he's got ones that he can just mid-range control or like mid-movement mid just recontrol. Like, okay, uh, switch it to a different spot. Or maybe he could uh, make them so they, they kind of like maybe chain explode on their ones or something where he could even throw off the, the ones that already have certain styles. Or maybe he could have one that could uh, maybe absorb the explosions of other ones and kind of like set up a really big explosion. I don't know. I I, don't, I really like Magna uh, in terms of just his, uh, the way he fights. I think he's a pretty solid character. I always look forward to the fights with him because his are very fun. He reminds me a lot actually in that regard of um, Joey Wheeler in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like when you saw Yugi and Kaiba, like how powerful that, like, like Yugi, it really when you look at like parallel stuff with like, Yugi, like, him and uh, Atem were absurd, and obviously some of the stuff Kaiba did was ridiculous, and in, in literally every aspect, personality-wise, like, just what he did as a businessman, some of, the, like, the parallel stuff he did, it, Kaiba was ridiculous, and then you have Joey, and, like, you have these reincarnated Egyptian beings, and then Joey, where even though Joey didn't have any powers, his duels were always really fun, because, like, he just was all, like, he had a bunch of wild cards, and he was, he was a very risky guy, and that's how Magna kind of is, too, and I like that about Magna. So, like, getting back to the chapter, I've been raining about, uh, about, like, just devil rankings, and I'm like, man, I really want to see just, uh, the, the gaps of, between the devils, and seeing, like, is, are these ones going to be more powerful than Zagrid, are they weaker, are they going to be less tricky, how is it going to, like, essentially display devils in general, because for the most part, we haven't seen the fight, like, real big battles of them outside of the one, and... Dark Triad kind of like set up, so those aren't really, you know, those, those aren't the same. And then these lesser devils, like we even see, they're getting, they're getting mashed. Like it, as long as they're they're getting, you know, somewhat of a threat level. Like a lot of people obviously can't really deal with them. I'm curious to know if the lower devils apply to the same rules that you have to be arcane or anything to kind of like to to kill them. Because I, I believe that it's only the upper devils because of their level of regeneration and probably, like, other crazy hacks. Like, the lower ones, I'm just guessing, are just really dumb monsters. And they probably have, you know, an ability or two up their sleeve. I don't expect them all to be that much of a threat. Like, like all I would really prefer out of these lo really low-tier devils is their... There's something that can only make... The, the, the tier that I'd want is, like, the very bottom. There's the masses. They're only able to be beaten by, like, kind of relevant characters. You're not just going to get some no-name character who, you know, it, it's just fodder beating up on one. Like, if it's... Even if it's, like, Soul, it's like it still takes a named character. And, like, Soul, even if she isn't that powerful, she's still a, a pretty well-placed Magic Knight. And any Magic Knight automatically is above the general population of, uh, of wizards in the Clover Kingdom and stuff. You know what I mean? It's the upper devils. That, like, anything below, like, masses of, of, of just fodder devils. Hey, these guys don't even get names. We're just letting them out to cause havoc kind of thing. Anything above those guys are the ones that I'm hoping at least get, like, a fair treatment. Like, they just massless ones get incinerated by pretty much any character showing up, Fuego, Leona, Gaja, and stuff. It's like, I don't care about them. As long as they're, you know, not totally uh, useless level monsters. Unless you have one that's just, like, super bottom tier, just running around doing nothing. But at the end of the chapter, like, we had, uh, like I said, he had, like, Fuego, Leona stuff going, like, he was just roasting a bunch of devils. And it makes sense why he would... He would go and protect the people because, uh, he, you know, he's a very Boy Scout character, so it makes sense why he would not go inside to feel, fight the big threats. He's trying to help all the small people outside with these just general masses. And it makes sense. Like, he has the Salamander. Salamander's just, like, breathing big AoE attacks on him. He's able just to raise large quantities of these guys in easy goes. Whereas, um, you know, maybe if you had 
I'm trying to think of like who actually in there wouldn't be able to do this. I guess really all of them. Never, never actually. Now that I think about it, it's probably just Fuego Leon just to be in Fuego Leon. Now that, now that I really kind of like mull it over. But at the end of the chapter, um, I was really happy to see the cavalry show up, and you had this really cool just rallying chapter of all the characters really kind of just getting grouped back up. You have Noel and crew uh, all in there, and I really liked that Gaja through this large lightning attack but made these barriers to protect the uh to protect the citizens i was very happy on that because he looks pissed he looks furious in this panel he's got the shading around his eyes you don't see his pupils he's just you know he, he's just throwing these big attacks not even waiting for the citizens to be safe out of the way he's like i'm just gonna attack you guys will be okay but you know, it's probably gonna freak you out and scare you a little like, but look at his face. He doesn't care right now. He is on a mission for blood and to get his queen back. He is not happy. He's going to get Laura Pechka and, and bring her home. And if not, he's going to die trying. Like, that's the thing right now. Like, I, I've i been very on the fence on if Laura Pechka dies or not or what exactly Tabata's plan is with her. There's no way, though, that he could let her die and keep Gaja after this arc. Gaja it would either go down fighting to uh to either save her or avenge her. It'd be really weird of what to do with his character if he's not you know, if he's not kind of I I don't wanna say tied to Laura Pichica, but kind of adjacent to her because obviously he, we don't know his backstory, but he's clearly very dedicated to, you know, the role of protecting the queen, and I, very understandably why, but I'm guessing there's more to it, like, maybe his, like, his family or something has just been in line of protecting the queen, or maybe because he's so much more powerful, similar to how Julius believed that it was his, uh, you know, it was kind of his role to protect the people, like, when remember he talked about how, like, powerful he was and his crazy magic, it was... It was almost like his, uh, you know, his existence to be the Wizard King and just, you know, serve and protect, do everything he can for the people. Maybe that's how Gaja kind of sees himself um, for the Queen. Because the other heart, like, the other Spirit Guardians, I wish we at least had a general idea of, like, where they're at. But it seems they're kind of, like, Vice Captain level. Like, lower Vice Captain level. And and, and they have true magic, but I'm like, they, they clearly aren't, like, up to par with even, like, some of the other... Growing characters, obviously Luck, and then Leo and Charmy and stuff, but Gaja is so much above them that maybe it's in his head that he's, he knows that he's so much stronger and he has a responsibility, be like maybe he thinks that he was, he's this strong for a reason, and that reason I would assume would be protecting the queen, and the knowledge that is tied to the heart queen and stuff too. So, I'm super hyped to see Gaja, I really like this, this spread too. Luck looks pretty cool. My favorite people on the like the chat, uh, the panel. If I had to pick four, just because those are probably the the ones that I would note the best. Gotcha, um, Noel, Charmy, and uh, and Leopold. I like Leopold's. I wish Leopold's is a little bit cooler because he's got that kind of like really cool general. I'm ready for battle stance. I wish there was like some fire on him or something, or maybe. Maybe some runes around his hand, like he's already setting up his uh, his Crimson Eruption if he ever needs to use it uh, in this battlefield or something. It's because, like, I, I, like, I've talked to people about it. Like, it's usually the, the hype is either Gaja, Charmy, or Noel, because you have Gaja looking like a monster. Charmy is just ready for battle. She's she, she's she's in serious mode, Charmy, already. So we're, we're ready to see uh, just where she steps up next. Is she... Clearly is is uh, already strong. She noted it for his eyeball, whereas like Luck and Leopold took took some fair um, time to do it, and their their opponent was definitely harder than hers. But she just ran through him like easy. And then Noel Noel is just is just leading the cavalry. She's up. She's in her Valkyrie dress already. She's just given a statement of, of what's going on. They're not going to let the devils do what they're planning on doing, and these guys are going to you know show up and aid to stop them. The only thing that I that I'd say is I know this is like the first wave, so these guys are gonna I would hope kind of even out the playing field until either we get uh, just another big character step up, whether it's another devil, whether it's Morris does like reveals something, or maybe that secret shining general is actually strong and he's uh, you know he's able to push some of the, like some of these bigger characters here. Who knows? Because we know that Austin and Co are on the way. That's obviously a big thing that's uh, that's coming up, and 
any other character like i i, I really want to know what the status is over in the diamond kingdom with like mars and stuff and I, i'll say it again because i fully believe i think the witch queen is going to show up because the witch queen regardless if she sides with any of these guys uh sides with the clover or like any of them like in any form of of mentality she should just want to side of them because she doesn't want the gate to open or otherwise like the witches are all screwed they're she's the only one out of the entire witches forest that should be strong enough to deal with like the general devils because when we saw the uh the the whole spade and or um sorry not spade uh, the the eye of the midnight sun and uh the the diamond kingdom people invade the uh hearts or ugh, I'm, I'm fumbling over words real quick the the, the witches forest outside of uh of, you know the the clover adjacent characters and the witch queen who who was there to really stop them because like you had some of the obviously like mars and stuff and fonzel but most of the witches don't seem very powerful so the witch queen would just be screwed i mean she or like the entire force would get overrun and it would just be her against uh you know all these doubles and she she should be like such a good asset at going against monica i know everyone wants to see that fight i'm guessing that in terms of just general blood manipulation that Vonica has like the sheer power advantage, but like the the Witch Queen just seems trickier and smarter, and she has like a just seems to be uh, what I would assume a bigger arsenal in general. Cause she's we don't know how old she is, but she has to be at least a couple centuries. But we'll see. Other than that, though, uh, comment below. I like how most of this was kind of like talking of where each of these points might lead to, and a little bit of lore or a little bit of context behind each of them. I guess that's kind of the 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 best thing to talk about when you have a chapter like this because it's mostly just setting up a couple locations, and it's more hype of like where each of these are going to go. But I am happy to see just the characters show up on the battlefield. I'm hoping that the spirit guardians could do something. Like, if we could get the Spirit Guardians having a, an ultimate magic cool elemental combo attack and, and maybe beating a shining that Shining General or maybe, like, that second Shining General because there was two, maybe the, the one next to the, like, the big important silhouette guy, I'd be okay with it. I'd, I'd be happy with it. Like, they... I don't really think that they can win my interest because none of them really seem that cool. And granted, like, that there's not really much for each of the characters. But... It would at least be something. It would make them feel at least not j like just bodies, because otherwise they're just bodies. Like, because if like if you're not gonna really provide any strength to this battle, then why are you showing up? Like, if if there's support, sure, I I'd be perfectly fine if they were support and like they they each they they just know, hey, we aren't as strong as some of these guys. We're gonna do whatever we can to uh to just to do our job that actually would make me happy that if, if they did something like that i'd be pretty uh pretty you know pretty smiling upon the uh the, the shine that shining general See, like i'm bad with words today uh the spirit guardians if, if they had some form of outright statement of of how things are they know that they aren't gonna like beat the big people they just want it to provide whatever assistance they can i'd be happy with that because it'd just be it'd be a really it'd be a really nice character moment for each of them at the same time so other than that, though, uh, comment below. This is a little bit longer than I thought it'd be, 23 minutes. I also for like 16 or something. Anyway, other than that, though, uh, comment below. Thumbs up the video, from the like button, subscribe button, and uh, check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate it. I'm sorry, subscribe. Thank you all for listening. Bye.